again, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about relative clauses. But what in the world is a relative clause? Let's start by looking at this picture. Now, if I'm talking about this picture, I can say that I bought it at the exhibition two days ago, and the picture is really breathtaking. But have you noticed that I described the picture in two sentences? Is there a way that I can do it in one? Absolutely. I could also say something like, the picture which I bought at the exhibition two days ago is really breathtaking. Here, I've used a relative clause to describe the picture, and this lets me do it in one sentence. And you should notice, too, that on your screen, the word which is in brackets. This can be omitted. So what is a relative clause, then? A relative clause is a clause that we use to provide more information about something within a sentence instead of adding simply a second sentence. And this makes your speech sound much more fluent, as well as allowing you to put more information in less space and less time. But to make a relative clause, you need the help of special relative pronouns or relative adverbs. Now, some examples of relative pronouns, who, which, that, whose, and whom, and also the relative adverbs, when, where, and why. You can see them here. Now, in some cases, we can omit the relative pronoun, just like you saw in the previous example. And let's look at a few more examples. If I say, the university is very famous and prestigious, Chris wants to apply for this university. To say these as one sentence, I can say that the university that or which Chris wants to apply for is very famous and prestigious. The relative pronouns which or that here are telling me more information about the object of the sentence and as such can be dropped. Here the information that follows which or that though, the information in the relative clause, is essential to both the speaker and the listener. It tells me more information about the university which or that Chris wants to apply to. This relationship defines the university. So to put it simply, we can drop the relative pronoun if the relative clause is the object of the sentence. Now note that the relative pronouns who and that refer to people. And the relative pronouns which and that refer to things or objects. Now, that can be used to refer to people or to things. Don't let that confuse you. And now, let's look at some more examples where we use relative pronouns who and which. If I say my friend who is obsessed with computing had hacked into my computer, I cannot say my friend is obsessed with computing had hacked into my computer. This statement is impossible because it is grammatically incorrect. Therefore, we can conclude the following rule also. If the relative pronoun is either the subject or the object of the relative clause, it cannot be dropped. You cannot drop your pronouns in this case. Now, let's look at a few more examples because sometimes relative clauses are separated from the rest of a sentence by commas. In this case, the relative clause is providing more information which is unnecessary to understand the sentence properly. It's just additional information, things that are nice to know or may help the listener, but again, they're not necessary. So let's look at some examples of this. First, as soon as the main character, who is an Oscar winner, appears on stage, the scene becomes gripping. Here, we don't need to know that the main character is an Oscar winner. The only part that we need to know is that as soon as he appears on stage, the scene becomes gripping. You, and you can take this part out of the sentence, and the sentence still makes perfect sense. However, if I say the next example, I couldn't remember the name of the actor who is the main character in the film Everest. In the second sentence, I can't forget the last piece of information, because if I simply say, I couldn't remember the name of the actor, I don't know who, I don't know which actor I'm talking about, and neither does my listener. 
So it is necessary for me to include the relative clause, and because I must include it, I also do not separate it from the rest of the sentence with commas. The same rule applies in the next two examples. If I say, where did you buy the jeans that you are wearing now? This is what we call a defining clause. They are the jeans you are wearing now, a particular set of jeans. This phrase tells me very important information because as the listener, I know exactly which pair of jeans I should talk about. However, in the sentence, the jeans, which were invented by Jacob Davis in partnership with Levi Strauss and company, are the most popular casual attire nowadays. In this second sentence, you don't need which were invented. This just gives you extra information about genes themselves, and as such, I can omit it. I can leave it out of my sentence, and because it is omissible, I separate it from the rest of my sentence with commas. Now, as I've already mentioned, we can use the relative pronouns who and that to discuss people, as well as which and that to discuss things. But we can also show possession. And to show possession, we need to use the pronoun whose. And usually whose cannot be dropped. Let's look at an example using whose. I can tell you that that's the actor whose performance usually receives a standing ovation. Now, this whose shows the relationship, the actor whose performance, and we cannot drop it here. Now, sometimes we may use the relative clause with who or whom, depending on whether or not the relative clause forms the subject or the object of the sentence. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, let's look at a couple examples. First, I'm going to say that the people who or that were sitting in front of us lacked good manners. Here, the people who were sitting in front of us, who forms the subject of the relative clause. As such, I can use who and that, but certainly not whom. But let's look at a second example. What if I say the people who or whom we met at the theater last night were lacking good manners. This who or whom forms the object of the relative clause, and as such, I may use who or whom, but not that. Now, it's important to note here that you may use who in either situation. So this may be a little bit simpler if you are not sure which one to use. But remember, if it's the subject, use that, and if it is the object, use whom. What's more, we can use who, which, or whom in expressions using of to mean quantity. Such as in the example, there were many people at the party, all of whom were her friends. Or, there were many people at the party, three of whom were her former university classmates. To express quantity, we often use some of these combinations, all of whom, two to four of whom, several of whom, or none of whom. And if we're speaking about inanimate objects, we simply replace who or whom with which. For example, she received a lot of presents, several of which she appreciated highly. Relative adverbs, where to define places, when to discuss time, and why to discuss the reasons for doing something can also be used to form a relative clause. So let's look at some examples with each of these. If I say that the building of the university where Sam was studying changed a lot, here where defines the place that I'm speaking about. But if I say that that was the period when students should have done their best to pass the exam, when here is providing more information for me about the time period in question. Finally, the reason why she put up with unfavorable conditions was her passionate desire to gain experience and knowledge. Here, the reason why explains her motivations. It tells the listener why, for what reason, 
she wanted to put up or she was willing to put up with unfavorable conditions. And the final point for today is the use of prepositions with the relative clause. If you look at the sentence, the person on whom I can always rely is my mom. This is grammatically correct, but it sounds very official, very formal, too formal for most situations. Much more casual and much more common would be the phrase, the person whom I can always rely on is my mom. So as a general rule, it's better to put prepositions at the end of your relative clause rather than at the beginning because it sounds much more relaxed and even friendlier. In this lecture, we've reviewed the relative clause in English, and I'd like to conclude by recapping a few points. First, remember that you can omit the relative pronoun, but only if it is the object of the relative clause. Also, never use which to refer to people. It just sounds bad. Also, separate relative clauses which provide unnecessary information or simply additional information from the rest of the sentence using commas. However, if the relative clause is necessary, you should not use commas. And finally, avoid using prepositions before a relative clause. Save them for later. Save them for after the clause. So, like always, be sure to review this lesson a few times just to make sure that you've properly understood all of the information. I'm sure you'll get it in no time. See you next lesson. Yeah.